Hello everyone, Lawrence here with the most work that I ever put into a single video because I tested every single Ryzen CPU out there, a couple of Intel CPUs as well, compared it all in a bunch of different benchmarks. Now Ryzen was released in March, I did a few videos on Ryzen already, especially on this Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, people loved it, but there were some really weird memory issues going on with Ryzen. So I did all my testing. And then I redid all my testing on the very latest BIOS for this motherboard, which is the F6D Beta BIOS, uh, which uses the Agisa 1.0.6, which should allow for up to 4000 megahertz RAM sticks. And then I use these Gale Evo X. Uh, this is a 16 gigabyte kit, but it runs at 3200 megahertz. So in this video, I'm only going to focus on performance, not the chipsets of Intel versus AMD or the amount of PCIe lanes just performance. So here's what our test system looks like. The motherboard on the AMD side is the AX370 Gaming 5. On the Intel side it was the Z270 Gaming 5. Um, the memory was the same on both platforms so we're using Gale Evo X3200 uh, megahertz memory. And then our GPU is the GTX 970. It's not the newest because my 1080 Ti isn't here yet. Um, but that's coming in the near future. Um, and then we just use the Be Quiet power supply and Noctua NHD 14 on the Intel side and an NHD 15 on the AMD side. The first benchmark that I did was W prime. And we're going to first look at the 10 different CPUs at the bottom of this graph. As you can see, some of these have a little asterisk next to them, which means that I had to emulate that CPU because I don't have, actually have 10 different CPUs here. So if you look at the 7700K, that one does not have the asterisk. That's an actual i7 7700K to then test the 7600K, I just disabled hyper-threading and changed the clock speed. Same for the AMD stuff, so my 1700X is the 1700, but with modified clock speeds, so that it's exactly the same as the 17700X. I checked these numbers, they're 99.4% accurate with the real deal, so we should be good to go. Now, the order in which they're in, is very simple so we have the fastest most expensive AMD CPU on top all the way to the cheapest AMD CPU and then we have the most expensive Intel CPU to the cheapest Intel CPU. As you would expect the 1800X is the fastest and the i3-7100 is the slowest. Interesting to note is that the 7700K is somewhere in between our 1600 and our 1500X which are almost half the price. Very interesting. Moving on to our next benchmark then, Cinebench. And I started with the multi-threaded version because this really shows just how many threads Ryzen has. And what I really like is the very linear progression. So if you look at the 708 point score of the AMD 1400, um, it's almost a perfectly straight line all the way up to the 1800X. And the price difference between these products is also very similar, so it's very linear. You can just start with a 1400 and then, depending on how much money you have, you're gonna get a fair increase in performance, which you don't really have with the competition. For example, the Intel, if we look at the 7600K compared to the 7700K, the price difference is way higher compared to the points difference between those CPUs. Interestingly, the 1400 is faster than the i5. Our next benchmark is Cinebench Single Threaded. Uh, and as you would expect, because they're all the same architecture and they're the same cores with the same memory, the scores are way closer together. So the lowest score here on the 1400 is 149 points for AMD, uh, and the highest AMD score is 163. Uh, that's just the difference between the 3.4 gigahertz boost and the 3.8 gigahertz boost. So they're very, very evenly matched. Moving away from our synthetic tests and benchmarks, I wanted to do something more realistic. So I took a one minute piece of video with of course a bunch of color correction and effects going on uh, and exported the 4K version of it. And here's what we have right here. Um, on the 1800X, our fastest export was 569 seconds, which is way, way faster than even the 7700K from Intel. The AMD 1600 is again very close to the i7-7700 in multi-threaded performance. Uh, overall, you can't really beat Ryzen when it comes to video exporting, uh, encoding, all that sort of stuff. What perhaps interests you more than our synthetic benchmarks and our video exporting uh, 
our gaming benchmarks. Now I tested everything at 1080p to limit the GPU factor in these tests. So we started with Far Cry Primal at 1080p. As you can see, um, basically I started the graph at 60 FPS, not at zero because 60 is like a minimum playable FPS these days. Uh, there's like eight FPS difference between the cheapest AMD and the most expensive AMD CPU that you can buy. Moving to our next benchmark then, The Witcher 3. Again, there's a 4 FPS difference between the lowest score and the highest score. So basically, it doesn't matter what this graph says, because all the numbers are very similar, 2% uh, between them, sometimes 3%. Battlefield 1 then, there is finally a little bit of a difference again. So on AMD side, you can go from 106 to 109 FPS, uh, but Intel takes a very good lead here because again it's very single threaded uh, only four cores are being used in battlefield one and so the i3 is basically the same as the i7 in terms of cores used now civilization 6 is a much more cpu intensive game than the ones we looked at previously and the same goes for games like uh, city skylines for example which are very cpu intensive and here amd's ryzen chips can finally stretch their legs in gaming so our i3, poor little i3, only gets 42 FPS, but more interestingly perhaps is that the i7 7700K gets less FPS than our 1500X. Now up till now the numbers you saw you may have already somewhat seen in other reviews. So I did a test that not a lot of reviewers did, which is streaming and taking FPS while streaming. So we took Civilization 6 and streamed this live to Twitch because a lot of you guys are streaming on Twitch right now. And well, here are the numbers. It's pretty shocking what a massive effect streaming has on our poor little i3, but even our i7 7700K loses 10 FPS, which is the same as the cheapest AMD CPU, the 1400. And so that's really weird because the 1400 is also a quad core with a thread just like the i7 that we're testing here, but it runs at way lower clock speeds. And this is where AMD's fancy, um, Infinity Fabric stuff comes in where the cores can talk to each other way more efficiently than what Intel can do And that's probably what explains these numbers. However, if we go from that 1400 to the 1800x with the 1800x there's basically no noticeable difference Between if you're streaming or not. It's just that powerful. It has that many threads. No problem whatsoever So for our conclusion then well the conclusion is pretty simple if all you ever do is play non CPU intensive games just go and buy the i3. It'll outperform even the 1800X and it'll be more or less on par with the i5s and the i7s, which only really have a few extra megahertz. It doesn't really matter all that much. But if you're gonna be streaming, if you're going to be um, exporting videos, if you're like me making YouTube videos, then go for Ryzen because it performs similarly in games, but in productivity and streaming, it's leaps and bounds better than what Intel has to offer right now. So anyway guys, if you like this video, press that like button. If you didn't, click the cross in the top right corner of your display right now because I put so much work in it, I'm not taking any dislikes. Uh, if you wanna see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to follow the channel more closely, there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. For the people who want to support this channel so that I can do more really labor intensive videos like this one, there's a Patreon link so you can support me. For now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next week with a review of this motherboard.